Hi, I'm Renee Berry. I'm a Partner Development Manager with the Global Startup Program at AWS, and I'm here in the studio today with Ben. Hey everyone, my name is Ben Schechter. I'm co-founder and CEO of Vantage. Vantage is a cloud cost visibility and optimization platform or a FinOps platform. So tell me a little bit more about what you're focused on at Vantage. Yeah, uh, so Vantage being a cloud cost visibility and optimization platform, we help customers essentially get cost observability on not only their AWS costs, but all the other cloud service providers that they leverage. We have over 8,000 organizations using Vantage globally, tracking in the billions of dollars of annualized cloud costs across 12 different providers. Awesome, okay, so you said a lot there, cloud cost visibility and optimization platform. Um, can you tell us a little bit more about like what that means? Is that different or the same as FinOps? I hear that talked about a lot as well. Yeah, so you can think of it being a similar term or largely kind of being the same thing. So FinOps or cloud cost visibility and optimization, it's this practice of increasingly what's happening uh, for having a devoted role or function at a company for people to not necessarily save money on cloud infrastructure, but just make sure that they're doing all of the work that comes with getting efficient use on cloud. So cost allocation by team, uh, budgeting, forecasting, over the span of the last five to 10 years, cloud has become an intricate part of how businesses run. And it's usually one of the top line items behind people's salaries at a company. And so by nature, you just wanna have an eye on these things. And increasingly, just given the complexity with one, how much spend there is, then two, the number of service providers that companies use to manage that spend, you need a software platform like Vantage to manage those costs. And so, yeah, we provide a platform for practitioners to essentially uh, get visibility on, practition all the various aspects that come with either FinOps or, or cloud cost management. So are they used interchangeably or is there like a differentiation for FinOps? Uh, between like cloud optimization and FinOps. So cloud optimization is one facet or tenant of FinOps. FinOps is kind of this broader practice uh, just to back up and even explain like FinOps stands for financial operations. It's something that's changed where predominantly five to 10 years ago, the CFO suite was responsible for paying the bills and figuring out, you know, how, how you can save money accordingly. Uh, those lines have blurred as developers and um, people focused on running the infrastructure, heavily involved with making sure there's not only the uh, spend management uh, from that function, but also just the optimization that comes with it. It's a lot more technical in nature. And so over time, these lines have blurred between the CFO suite and the technical kind of org that has culminated into this FinOps practice. And so, um, Cost optimization is one portion of that. Uh, it's part of a broader practice for showing visibility to the various teams for what they're spending on cloud, as well as uh, all the tools that are needed for just kind of general practicing on that, budgeting, forecasting, giving uh, reports to management or finance, and you know along the way, making sure there's efficient use. Yep. And what are teams doing if they don't have Vantage? So like you're talking about, you know, all of the, like it's a number two spend, like outside of people's salaries. So if they don't have a great tool like Vantage, like what are teams having to deal with to try to get visibility? Yeah, so the majority of the time, there's a lot of manual work that's done through software engineers on their team having to write custom scripts. Uh, a lot of work is done through spreadsheets. It's kind of, uh, all over the place in terms of how people kind of manage this. The distillation of that, it's usually a lot of software engineering time and then also uh, a lot of work for just maintaining a platform. You can imagine if you have to write a script to present data in a dashboard for someone to view that, you can have your team kind of working on that. But more often than not, organizations want to have them focused on you know things that are driving the, the business, new features, everything along those lines. And so, um, the the majority of organizations that are managing this in-house through custom scripts or spreadsheets largely are looking for like third-party vendors like Vantage, which just kind of make it easier from that. But yeah, for the most part, like spreadsheets and, and manual work. Okay, that sounds like something that can save developers time and keep them focused on the product. Like that's a good thing. 
So can you help us understand how Vantage is differentiated from AWS Cost Explorer? Yeah, so AWS Cost Explorer gives you visibility into your AWS bill. Increasingly, organizations will leverage other AWS partners like Snowflake or Databricks or Datadog and want to have support beyond just the AWS bill. Uh, Vantage is a platform that has support for 12 different providers beyond just AWS, and Cost Explorer is well suited for just AWS. Got it. Um, and you say you have, you know, integrations with 12 other providers, but at Vantage, like, those are native integrations with all of these other AWS partners, right? Can you talk about why that's important and how that impacts like user experience and why you prioritize that advantage? Yeah, definitely. So uh, I appreciate you you mentioning this. So 12 native integrations, just to enunciate this, these are truly turnkey. And what this means is when you come to Vantage and you want to onboard either AWS or Snowflake or Datadog, it is as simple as a copy and paste or entering in an API key. And Vantage has done the heavy lifting of integrating with not only the raw underlying cost data, but also all the service APIs to ingest and structure all of that in our data warehouse. And you can get up and running in a few minutes and all of your cost data will be in the platform to practition. Unlike other solutions that require you to kind of like package up all the data and have your software engineering teams push up to an API, on Vantage, it's a click of a button or a copy and paste of a command. And then on an ongoing basis, we continue to ingest that data across all the different providers to give you just kind of a single pane of glass into all of the costs that you have. Awesome. So if someone doesn't have native integrations, that can take like technical teams work yeah. and you know days to weeks to get that up and running. And anytime there's an update of one of these other providers, that technical team needs to come back and like make sure that that goes. And with Vantage, does that technical team have ongoing things that they need to do or? No, nothing. That's okay. that's essentially part of the service that we're providing, not only the ingestion of all of that data, but you're right, these APIs change all the time, they change the structure. If uh, new sets of pricing or SKUs come out, we automatically take care of that advantage. And then in addition, which is worth mentioning, is we also do all of the normalization across all the providers. And so you can imagine AWS costs have a little bit of a different structure from Fastly costs, a little bit of a different structure from Snowflake costs, and we do all the work to kind of merge those together on our end. And the distillation of that is you just get a very easy point and click interface for creating the reports, which is usually what you want to spend time on, not the like data engineering aspects for yeah. your team to kind of do all that heavy lifting. Yeah, makes sense. Do you think that the native integrations have had an impact on product led growth at Vantage? Like, can you talk about why you prioritize UX there? Yeah, actually, uh, one of our first employees of the company uh, was a designer. Design has always been a major component of, uh, of Vantage. It's like one of the core kind of themes of the company in an otherwise kind of clunky space of FinOps. The thing that we've always focused on, one, simplicity and ease of use, primarily because bills and uh, infrastructure billing can be very complicated. And so we wanted to take a fresh take on that. And then two, the entire platform is actually unique in that it's entirely self-service. So you don't need to talk to a sales team. You can and get support there, or you can just go to the website, uh, log in. All of the provider credentials are automatically created when you register the accounts. You can connect all of those and begin practicing in a way that's just very smooth and easy. This was something that we focused on from the beginning. You're right, it does kind of embody this PLG or product-led growth motion. That's resulted in over 8,000 organizations now globally onboarding to Vantage, tracking in the billions of dollars of annualized cloud costs. Love it. So I, I'm sure you have a strong opinion on this, but a lot of people in talking about product-led growth are trying free trials, right? And so they're like, oh, well, if I just open this part of my product to a free trial, then we can like have self-service and move along. But I feel like one of the pieces that they're not looking into in detail is the UX and like what that total experience has been, where I feel like Advantage, that's been baked into how you've started and grown from moving forward. Yeah, for sure. I mean, uh, in general, I think design and ease of use is just an expectation of how people uh, uh, expect to work with like any provider, not just uh, not just a FinOps provider, but really like any SaaS provider at this point. So um, yeah, just to reiterate, we, a designer was one of our first hires. Design is kind of a theme in a way that we think about the products really from like every feature we build. 
And then to your point for the self-service onboarding flow, uh, from the time that you register an account to actually connect your infrastructure providers to the actual dashboard, design is a core component of that. Simplicity is a core component of that. In general, it takes minutes, not hours or days for people to get up and running. And then specifically to your point on free trials and self-service, automatically when you connect an infrastructure provider, so like AWS or anything else, we automatically detect how many costs there are and can progress you into a free trial for you to fully evaluate the entire system before making a purchasing decision. And then as part of that process, our team can proactively reach out to you do a demo call or talk through your account's data with you, but um, it's always there as an op as an option, not a necessity, because there's been such a keen focus on design. And uh, I can't remember if I mentioned this, but if I didn't, we have tens of thousands of users, over 8,000 organizations, and the vast majority of them have been self-service in terms of getting up and running with, with Vantage. Amazing. Um, can you tell me a little bit more about some of Vantage's customers? Yeah, so we have a whole mix of different organizations. The thing that's interesting about FinOps is that we have customers that range all the way from individuals and startups all the way up to multiple Fortune 500 organizations. Um, a few kind of key stories and use cases from a customer perspective. Um, I'll kind of start at the enterprise level and then walk through that use case and then go through the commercial or startup okay. kind of use cases from there. Um, one of our customers is Square, uh, the payment processor block. Uh, they use Vantage to essentially drive accountability and cost governance throughout the organization. And their kind of perspective on that is to onboard as many engineers at their organization, all set up with their own cost reports, all with their own dashboards to get a view of all of the costs that you have by team or by business unit or service. And they have a core cloud economics or FinOps practitioner that can work with all the teams, explain to them how to create these reports, organize those reports into folders. And then those teams can kind of come back, take a look at their reports and know that they're in budget or out of budget and adjust things accordingly. There's a number of other things they do for just kind of like monthly reporting or cost allocation and can flip on these features from the platform as need be. That's what I would refer to as like a typical like enterprise use case okay. where you have expect to have hundreds or low thousands of uh, employees on, on Vantage, each with their own kind of respective dashboards for the startup. Before yeah. you go into that, um, are, so you're saying different teams, like not just in finance or not just developers, right? Like you have users across the organizations that are logging into Vantage to run these reports and have it be automated ongoing? Correct, yeah. So predominantly the uh, main users on Vantage are developers or folks who are in the infrastructure engineering organization. Uh, that always represents the vast majority of people who are practicing on Vantage. Uh, for other folks who get pulled in accordingly, it includes things like finance or management. And you can imagine finance is ultimately taking a look and paying the bills. They just wanna see, hey, what's our spender utilization on these specific savings plans by teams or how much is Graviton adoption for the specific team? And they can set up these specific reports with Vantage and just send them to that specific dashboard. So there's optionality to have anyone from your organization be in Vantage, but predominantly it's people from the technical organization. What about startup use cases? Yeah, so startups are really the bread and butter of the folks that we cater to you at Vantage and uh, entirely who are early users. In general, what we hear from like a use case perspective for startups, SMBs, commercial accounts, are that they just want to get visibility on what's driving their costs, because it can be very complicated if you have a burgeoning or growing team of engineers, all of which are kind of making sure that you're building the infrastructure to serve an ever-growing business. Sometimes you'll get the bill at the end of the month, and you just want to make sure that, one, you have spend going in the right services, and that is efficient use. And so, when a startup or SMB actually onboards to Vantage, there's a number of summary reports that are given to them out of the box to just showcase like, here's where your spend is going, here's where you're forecasted to be at the end of the month, here's where you can actually get some more efficient use by committing to a savings plan. We have a managed service called Autopilot that can manage some of these financial commitments on their behalf. And uh, I would say these use cases are a little bit more basic just on cost observability. But that being said, it can provide a tremendous amount of value because these smaller companies don't have a devoted 
cloud cost or finance person focusing on this, yeah. where the software can kind of step in and help them accordingly. Okay. And part of this is like with, before cloud, you didn't have pricing kind of shifting and changing as you're testing different products and services, where now with the growth of cloud, that's completely changed and you're getting pricing based on usage, how much a team might be using something for testing. And so you want to make sure that that stuff is turned on to the right things and that you monitor it as you grow. Exactly. And uh, the the kind of like short note on that is like thinking about it from a world where it was previously looked at as CapEx, yep. that's now OpEx. And uh, you're right, like if you go and buy a server in a data center or something that's a fixed cost, you amortize that out. Whereas on public cloud, the benefit of it is that you can scale things up as you need to you know, get servers flipped on to serve your application or business and scale them down. But with that, there is what can be you know, more complicated pricing or different SKUs that fluctuate hour to hour, day by day, team to team. And so that's just why you need a set of software to keep track of you know, the tens of thousands of different pricing permutations on public cloud or cloud service providers. Okay. So, I mean, if you're thinking about migrating to the cloud, if you have some stuff or no stuff on the cloud, having a tool like Vantage can help give you confidence that as you're getting into these new pricing models, that you're gonna really understand what team is using what products and services, which might be more complicated without the tool. Exactly, and actually a main enterprise use case is beginning to get a FinOps vendor in place to track your migration from on-prem to public cloud. So as you migrate from, you know, historically what you were doing through data centers, if you're making a five-year kind of like cost transformation or digital transformation initiative to move from on-prem to public cloud, you can use Vantage to make sure that migration is going in uh, the steady fashion that you expect it to, but also make sure that you have efficient costs as you, as you do that onboarding. So as a founder, what lessons do you have about the timing of your partnership with AWS? Yeah, so as a backstory, the company started in September of 2020, and I believe in February of 2021, we became AWS Marketplace partners. This was largely driven by customer feedback that we got for customers having a preference to pay us or uh, work with ISV partners through the marketplace. And so by nature of getting that customer feedback and kind of prioritizing customers at, at kind of the, the front of everything we do, we were very early with getting into AWS Marketplace for the journey of the company. Uh, we've now been in AWS Marketplace for probably about three-ish years, and it's been a really core part of the growth story of Vantage, where a lot of customers have an expectation to purchase ISV partner software through AWS Marketplace. So. Um, short story is we got started very early on. It was one of the better decisions that we made. With how you've used um, AWS Marketplace, has it just been leveraging the self-service function or have you leveraged private offers as well? Uh, actually, I think by numbers, we might have more private offers um, than public listings, but we have both. Uh, what we were talking about earlier with having a keen focus on self-service, there are a number of folks that when they look to make a purchasing decision with Vantage, we give them options. They can pay us through credit card, through direct invoice, through AWS Marketplace. And there is a route where customers will go and just self-service through the public listings. For the larger enterprise deals, uh, where there's custom pricing or anything along those lines, all of those are done through private offers. At the end of the day, we don't have a preference one way or another, and we leave it up to the customer, but there's a healthy amount both on private offers as well as the public listings. Nice. I think a lot of startups I hear, um, they have questions because they think that AWS Marketplace is just for self-service. And mm. I know it's a strength of Vantage, but I also like have a sense that you've been having a mix of both. Yeah, definitely. I would say for almost all enterprise deals, there's just an expectation that it goes through as a private offer. Okay, nice. Um, what about, can you share a little bit about the impact of the Global Startup Program um, in your partnership with AWS and Vantage? Yeah, for sure. So I think uh, over the journey of what we've had, we were AWS Marketplace partners and then ISV Accelerate, ISVA, um, and now in GSP. Uh, and I think things have just gotten better at every step of the way. Right now, we have a devoted startup partner manager, which has really been a tremendous uh, kind of noticeable improvement from what we have in terms of support. It feels like we have someone who's on our team 
helping us as like a Vantage employee almost for navigating how to get things accomplished at AWS, but also help us from like a co-marketing, co-sell perspective. And so we're very grateful to you be included in the program. Um, it's something that we put a lot of resources into and it's been fundamental in our go-to-market efforts. Can you tell me a little bit about how AWS account managers have been using Vantage with their customers? Yeah, for sure. And we actually have pretty good visibility on this, the organic use cases that are popping up. We have over 8,000 organizations now. The vast majority of them have an AWS component to their Vantage account. And the two things we see happening from an account manager perspective are, one, they're getting invited to the Vantage account to look at what other AWS partners they're using kind of alongside their core primary cloud of AWS. And this can be helpful for EDP planning if they're moving from one service to the other or uh, certain deals that could otherwise go through the AWS marketplace that aren't currently going through that. And so I've seen where actually customers will invite the account manager to the account to help kind of craft these offers or craft these EDPs. The second use case, which is more predominantly used with startups or SMBs is one, just get the account manager recommending Vantage to them purely for cost visibility and assisting with things like Hey, you can get more efficient use with savings plans. You can get more efficient use with migrated Graviton. Some of those things are automatically surfaced to them. And if you're an account manager with hundreds or thousands of accounts and the self-service nature of Vantage, you can just point those customers to Vantage and it will all automatically be surfaced to them in a way that would otherwise be very manual for the account manager, the SA, the TAM, uh, just general AWS support. And so those are kind of the two things that account managers are unlocking that we see organically happening in the wild. Nice. I know you have the Vantage Cloud Cost Report that came out recently. Can you tell me a little bit about any interesting data insights that have been spotlighted there that you've noticed? Yeah, so the Vantage Cloud Cost Report is something that we publish quarterly. It's a report with interesting trends that, as it relates to cloud infrastructure and any associated cost information based upon the aggregated and anonymous usage amongst our entire customer base. Uh, kind of two things that we're seeing as it relates to the AWS world these days. One is an increase in Graviton adoption, not only on EC2, but for other managed services. And we kind of show a timeline of the uptick of Graviton relative to other options. The second thing, and really over the span of the last year, kind of that same timeline view, we see uh, the bulk of customers committing to financial commitments, largely savings plans, to commit to AWS on one or three year terms to get the corresponding discount. And so we show the share of committed spend versus on demand and on demand kind of eking down as customers are committing more. There's a bunch of other interesting things like EC2 generational upgrade trends or EBS volume upgrade trends that people can go and take a look at the report accordingly. Awesome. And you said that's every quarter you publish this every quarter. data set? Yep, every okay. quarter we try and surface probably like five or six different trends that we see and then we'll update certain trends just kind of along the way. Nice. Okay, well, awesome. Thank you so much for coming and chatting with us today in the studio. Um, I love working with Vantage. I think that you're doing amazing things and I couldn't be more excited about your growth. Yeah, no, thank you for having me. It's great to be here. We're happy to be AWS partners and looking forward to continuing the relationship. Awesome.